questions. So some of the things that we're going to go over today is we're going to talk about decimals to fractions, multiplying multi-digit numbers, adding fractions with different denominators, and just finding percentages. So I'm going to go over uh, plenty of skills in this video. And then I'm also going to link the skills down below so that you can know exactly um, what minute in the video to turn to if you're looking for a specific practice. All right, so the first thing we're gonna look at is how we can turn this decimal into a fraction. And what I always like to say is if you can read a decimal, then you can write it as a fraction. So whenever you're looking at a decimal, say you have 0.432, you should know the place values of each number. So the four is in the tenths place, three is in the hundredths place, and two is in the thousandths place. So the way that you would read this is you read the number 432 and whatever the last place value the last digit is in, so the two is in the thousands place, you would say that word at the end. So you would say 432 thousandths. So because I can read that decimal, I can put it as a fraction. You put the 432 on the top and you put the thousandths on the bottom, 432 over a thousand. So if we look at this first uh, decimal that I have, 0 0.004, well, how is the proper way to read this? Well, you would read four, and then because this four is in the thousandths place, you would say four thousandths. So how would I write as a fraction? You would write four over 1,000. So let's just do a couple of more examples just so we can make sure that we get used to this. 0.32, okay? So this would be 32, and then the two is in the hundredths place. So I would read it as 32 hundredths. So how would I write it? As a fraction, 32 over 100. And one more example, 0.5. How would I read this? I would read five, and it's in the tenths place. So I would read this as five tenths. So how would I write this as a fraction? Five over 10. The next thing that I want to talk about is how we would reduce um, a fraction. So sometimes you'll get an answer like 35 over 100. How would we go about reducing this fraction? And the reason why it's important to know how to reduce this fraction or to simplify it is because sometimes you'll get this as an answer, but then you look at the answer key and you don't see 35 over 100. You see all simplified fractions. So we need to know how to simplify our answers so that we could choose the right one. So how do we simplify? The way we simplify a fraction is we're gonna take the top number and the bottom number and we're gonna find the largest number that goes into both numbers that we can divide them by. So we literally just have to find the factors of 35 and the factors of 100 and find the greatest common factor. So how do we go about doing that? Well, you just go ahead and just write all the numbers that multiply to 35. So you do one times 35 is 35, and then you can do five times seven is 35. And I don't think that there's any other ones. Yeah. So the factors of 35 would be one, five, seven, and 35. So then we go ahead and figure out the factors of 100. So what numbers multiply to get 100? You could do one times 100. You can do two times 50. You could do four times 25, you could do five times 20, and you can do 10 times 10. So all the numbers that I've underlined are the factors of 100. So you have to look at this list and this list and ask yourself, what is the greatest number or the highest number that appears in both lists? So the number that appears in both, both lists that is the highest is five. So five would be the number that I divide the top and the bottom number by to reduce this fraction. So 35 divided by five would be seven, 100 divided by five would be 20. So that fraction reduced would be seven over 20. A trick I also wanna show you is if you happen to have, um, say you have four over 16, say you're not able to find the greatest common factor, meaning you can't find the largest number that goes into both, because this one is an even number and this is an even number, you can always divide by two. So you could divide by two. So four divided by two is two, eight, uh, 16 divided by two is eight. But the only thing with dividing by two is that you have to continue dividing and continue to find a number that goes into both numbers until you, get, you can't go any further. 
So this actually can be divided by two again. So two divided by two is one, eight divided by two is four. So four over 16 reduced would be one over four. Now, if you were able to see that the large number that goes into four and 16 is four, then you would easily have been able to get one over four just in one step. But sometimes you're not able to see that it can be easily um, reduced by the greatest common factor. So you can go ahead and divide by smaller numbers. The only risk that you're taking when dividing by smaller numbers is that I've seen some students, they stop. They stop dividing and they think they've gotten the final step. So they'll stop at this point and be like, oh, it's two over eight. But you have to keep going until you can't divide the top or bottom number by any other number other than one. All right, so we just practice, just in brief, we just practice changing decimals to fractions, and then we practice reducing fractions. So let's go ahead and multiply by two digit numbers. So we're multiplying by two digit numbers. So say we have 12 times 24. So I don't know about you, but anytime I need to multiply something, I pull out my calculator, I pull out my phone, and I enter in the numbers and I get my answer. So you may have not done this type of problem with a pen and pencil in a very long time. You may not even be used to, okay, how do I line everything up and how do I multiply it? So let's practice that and then I can show you a trick after. So the way that we multiply this out is you start with multiplying everything by the four. So you would do two times the four and one times the four. Two times four is eight. One times four is four. You're done with the four. So now you have to cross the four out and make a zero. That's a step that a lot of students forget because they forget to cross out the four and make it a zero. So we gotta make sure that you don't forget that step. Now that you're done with the four, you are gonna now multiply everything by the two. So two times two and one times two. So two times two is four. One times two is two. You're gonna go ahead and add those together. Eight plus zero is eight. Four plus four is eight. Zero plus two is two. The answer is 288. But say you are doing this, you got the answer as 324. You're like, oh, how did I get that? I forgot to carry the zero. I forgot to do this. I forgot to do that. How can you guys do another way of solving, multiplying two two-digit numbers? So I'm going to show you my method that I really like. And it's known by a lot of students, so it's not just my method. This is a method that I saw tutoring um, fifth graders. And I really like this box method because what you can do is the side method is going to be 12. The top is going to be 24. We break apart the 24 by doing 20 plus 4. You break apart the 12 by doing 10 plus 2. And now you just multiply the boxes. So in this box, you do 20 times 10, which is 200. You could probably do that in your head. This box, you do 4 times 10, which is 40. This, this box, you do 20 times 2, which is 40. And this box, you do 4 times 2, which is 8. You could do that all in your head. And then you just add all the boxes. 20 plus 40 plus 40 plus 8. So 200 plus 80 plus 8, 288 and you were able to do the majority of that in your head without ever having to do the standard form of multiplication. So I would definitely recommend practicing the box method because it just helps you to, if you get a little bit caught up or stuck when you're doing the um, standard form, then go ahead and try the box method. It's super simple. Do you want me to give you another example or do you think you're okay? I think you guys are okay. So we're going to go ahead and by the way, if you want more box practice, I do have um, an Accuplacer arithmetic workbook that I put together that I'll link below. You guys can purchase it if you want. I tried to make it as inexpensive as possible. It's only $7.99 um, and you guys can purchase that and you can practice the box method more and you can practice all the other things that we're also going over so that you can strengthen your math skills so that you can be more prepared when you go into your college placement test, your Accuplacer test, your TSI test, whichever test you're taking. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna look at adding fractions with different denominators. So we have three over 10 plus two over 100. So if you've seen my, some of my other videos, you've seen that um, I teach very frequently that you cannot add 
fractions that have different denominators. Denominator is the number on the bottom of the fraction. So because one denominator is 10, the other denominator is a 100, you can't add them as they are. You have to get them to have the same denominator. So when you're dealing with a denominator of 10 and a denominator of 100, I'll just tell you the secret. Just try to make them both have a denominator of 100. So this one already has a denominator of 100, so it can stay as it is, 2 over 100, but this one does not. So how do I make 3 over 10 to have a denominator of 100? Well, 10 times 10 is equal to 100. So because I multiply the bottom by 10, I have to multiply the top by 10, and I get 30 over 100. So now I have 30 over 100 plus 2 over 100, and that is equal to 32 over 100. Let's go ahead and do that again. So I, I have 5 over 10 plus 40 over 100. I'm going to make them both have a denominator of 100. So this one already has a denominator of 100, so it stays the same. This one, if I want to make it have a denominator of 100, I multiply the bottom by 10, multiply the top by 10, 50 over 100. And then I'm going to do 50 over 100 plus 40 over 100. Since they both have the same denominator, the answer is also going to have a denominator of 100. And 50 plus 40 is 90, so the answer is going to be 90 over 100. And then if we want to go ahead and reduce 90 over 100, we're going to find the largest number that goes into both 90 and 100. The largest number that goes into 90 and 100 is 10, so we're going to divide by 10. 90 divided by 10 is 9. 100 divided by 10 is 10. So reduced would be 9 over 10. Sometimes in your test taking, in your practice, because you may be um, practicing basic arithmetic in your college placement exam, they may want you to put your answer in as 90 over 100. But in the majority of tests that you're going to be taking, the majority of times, they usually put the simplified version in. So you should be able to know how to change a fraction to the simplified version or to reduce that fraction. And again, you just find the largest number that goes into the top and the bottom number. You divide by that number and you're able to get your answer. All right. So you guys are doing excellent, by the way. Um, we're going to just go over um, adding. And I know adding may be simple for some people, but again, most times when we're adding things, most times when we're adding things, we are adding on our calculators or your phones. You're not really doing the standard format of adding. So we have to practice that, especially if you're being tested on addition without being able to use a calculator. So how would we add these? And this is really important to see this example because by seeing this example, you'll be able to know what happens when you get a number that's larger than nine and you can see how to carry the numbers over to the next few. So you start, you can make lines if you need to, but if you don't, that's fine. You do four plus seven. So four plus seven is 11. So you bring down the one and you carry the one. So. 5 plus 3 is 8, plus the 1 on top is 9, and then 2 plus 0 is 2, so 291. Let's try this again. So if I have 398 plus 41, no, plus 45, make it a little bit complicated. So 8 plus 5 is 13, the 3 goes down, the 1 goes on top. 9 plus 1 plus 4 is 14, so you do 4 plus 1 up top and then three plus one is four so the answer is 443 so just remember that you carry the number to the next set of numbers and then you add that to the row all right so you guys are doing excellent so let's go ahead and start looking at percentages so if i told you that i have 80 cards 80 cards that are blue out of a total of 150 cards. And I wanted to know what percentage of the cards are blue. How would we go about doing this? Well, when we're talking about percentages, we're t we can also put it in a fraction form. So a percentage can also be represented with a fraction. On the bottom of the fraction, you would write the total. And then on the top, you would write the specific ask. So. If the total number of cards is 150, you put 150 on the bottom. 
And if the total number of cards is the specific ask, we put the specific ask of 80 on the top of that fraction. So 80 over 150 would be a fraction that represents the percentage of the number of blue cards. There's two ways to solve this, so I'm going to show you both ways. Just in case you're, you have access to a calculator, but also if you ac don't have access to a calculator. So if you have access to a calculator, the way that you can do this is that anytime you have a fraction, a fraction can also be written as a decimal. So a fraction can be written as a decimal. How? Well, every fraction is a division problem. So 80 over 150 is the same as saying 80 divided by 150. 80 divided by 150, and this is if you have a calculator, so I'm using a calculator, is 0.53 and then 33333. 3, 3, 3. So we're just going to round it to 0. 0.53. So 0. 0.53 is going to be the decimal that represents the percentage. But we want this as a percentage, not as a decimal. So how do we change it from a decimal to a percentage? You move the decimal place over to the right two and add a percent sign. So 53%. Again, I just took the top, divided it by the bottom, got a decimal, changed that decimal to a percentage sign. Okay, but how would I go about this if I don't have a calculator and I'm not just able to divide the top number by the bottom number, get a decimal, and then convert it? Well, you could do it another way. So say I have 40 cards that are blue out of a total of 50 cards, and I can't just do 40 divided by 50 and then find out what decimal it is and then convert it into percentage. That means I'm gonna to have to do another method. And this other method is a very common method, but sometimes students have difficulty doing it. So let's go ahead and go over it. So 40 over 50, that is going to be the percentage that we're trying to find out. And we're trying to figure out, okay, it's equal to what percentage? Well, a percentage can also be written as something out of 100. So because we don't know what it represents, we're gonna put an X on top. So we have to say, okay, how did I go from 50 to 100? You can easily see that you multiplied the bottom by two. So you can multiply the top by two and you can get 80 and 80 out of 100 would be 80%. Or you could do it cross multiplication way. So X over 100. You can cross multiply. Cross multiply means you would multiply the numbers across from each other. 40 times 100 is equal to 50 times x. 50 times x is 50x. 40 times 100 is 4,000. You literally just count the zeros, one, two, three, and you can add it to the answer. So 4,000 equals to 50. Now you have to ask yourself, I need the x by itself. How can I get the x by itself? Well, I can divide both sides by 50, divide both sides by 50, and x is equal to 80. So that was a way that we can answer this question through cross multiplication. So are you ready for another example? Let's go ahead and do it because I feel like we're gonna need this one. And if you are learning from this example and you're learning from this video, I'm glad. It's more of an impromptu video, but I still wanted to be able to help you guys with the basics. So please let me know if you guys are benefited from this and if you like these types of videos as well. I know I usually go over each question one by one by one, but this is also just a skills-based video. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do it again. So if 20 out of 50 cards are red, what percentage is it? So 20 out of 50, 50 is a total, and we're gonna set that equal to a fraction out of 100 because we're trying to find a percentage, and we're gonna make that into an X. So we're gonna cross multiply, that means multiply the numbers across from each other, 20 times 100, and we're gonna set that equal to 50 times X. 50 times X is 50X. And then 20 times 100, you count the zeros, one, two, three. So two, one, two, three, 2,000. Divide both sides by 50, divide both sides by 50. And then X is going to be equal to 2,000 divided by 50, which I believe is 40, but again, 
Yes, it's 40. So X is going to be equal to 40. So the percentage is 40%. All right, great job. So now we're going to go ahead and compare. We're going to try our best to compare fractions to decimals. So sometimes we'll have a list in your um, college placement test. You'll have a list of um, fractions and decimals. So say, for example, you have 10 over 3 and you have 2 over 4. Then you have 2.4 and you have 3.1 and you have 0 0.3. And they say... Which one of these choices is the greatest value? Like, which one is the greatest? The way that I like going about that kind of question is I try to see which one is greater than one and which one is less than one. Because if I can figure out the ones that are less than one, I can eliminate them right away because I know that they're not going to be bigger than the ones that are greater than one. So look at each one of these examples and ask yourself which ones are greater than one. So this fraction, how do I determine whether a fraction is greater than one? Well, if it's top heavy, meaning is the number on top heavier or larger than the number on the bottom? If the answer is yes, in this case, it is yes, 10 is larger than three, then this is greater than one. Perfect. So two out of four, is this top heavy? Meaning is the top number heavier or larger than the bottom number? In this case, no, it's not. It's smaller, so it's less than one. It's less than one, perfect. Now let's go ahead and look at these decimals. 2.4, is 2.4 larger or smaller than one? It's larger, but some people don't see that easily. Some people are like, whoa, Miss Amber, how did you know that 2.4 is larger than one? Well, 2.4 and 1.0. The way that you would write one is by saying 1.0. So. 2 is larger than the 1, so 2.4 is larger or greater than 1. So greater than 1 is perfect. Okay, and then 0 0.3, is 0 0.3 greater than 1? No, it's not, but how do I see that? 0 0.3, 1.0, this has a 0, that has a 1, so 1 is greater. So this is less than 1. So if we're trying to figure out which ones are largest, and we know this is less than one and this is less than one, then we know that it's either going to be the one that's greater than one or the other one that's greater than one. So it's either gonna be 10 thirds or 2.4. Well, 10 thirds, we learned in the other example how to turn that into a decimal so we can compare. Well, 10 over three is the same as saying 10 divided by three and 10 divided by three is 3.333 repeating. So is 3.333 repeating bigger than 2.4? This is a three and that's a four. The 3.33 repeating is larger. So the largest number in this lineup is 10 over three. So again, I would recommend that if you guys ever have a problem like this, that you guys are only trying to find the number that's the greatest then go ahead and see, okay, which one is greater than one, which one is less than one, which one is greater than one, which is less than one, and then eliminate the less than ones, and then see out of the ones that are greater than one, which one is the largest. You can easily turn a fraction into a decimal by dividing. Divide the top number by the bottom number, and boom, you have a decimal. All right, great job. The last thing that I wanna show you, because, um, actually no, two more things I wanna show you. So if you're hanging in there, great job. Two things I want to show you, so I just got to remember how to find a percentage of a number. I want to show you how to find a percentage of a number. So I want to show you 25 is percent of 150. So what is 25% of 150? And then the other thing I wanted to show you is, oh, dividing fractions. So 1 fourth divided by 2 eighths. So those are the two things I want to show you. So which one am I gonna start with? Hmm, let's start with the fractions. Okay, dividing fractions. You have to follow a method called keep, change, flip. Keep, change, flip. Now, sometimes I get this confused with KFC, even though it's KCF, but it's it helps you just to try to remember it by saying KFC, then you just like, oh, okay, okay. It's just backwards, KCF. All right, so keep, meaning you keep the first fraction the same. Change, meaning you change the division to multiplication. 
And flip means you flip the fraction upside down, so it would be 8 over 2. So now, instead of a division problem, you have a multiplication problem. And multiplying fractions is easy because you just multiply the tops, 1 times 8, and then you multiply the bottoms, 4 times 2. 1 times 8 is 8, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 over 8 is the same as saying 8 divided by 8, and that is equal to 1. Great job. Let's try this one more time. 1 over 2 divided by 4 thirds. No, 4 halves. So keep, change, flip. Keep it 1 half, change it to multiplication, flip it on its head. So then you multiply the tops. 1 times 2, 2 times 4, 2 over... Sorry, my battery is about to die, so I'm going to have to end this video soon. 2 over 8, and then how do I redu reduce this? 2 over 8, I can divide both the top and the bottom by 2, and it's equal to 1 over 4. So remember, keep, change, flip. Keep, change, flip. Now let's go ahead and go over percentages. 25 is 25% 25 of 150. So you say that I'm getting a 25% off discount off an item that costs $150, how much is that discount? Okay, well, you change the percentage to a decimal. The way that you change the percentage to a decimal is you move it over the decimal place over twice. So right now it's 25, so the decimal place would be here, and you move it over to the left twice. One, two, and you make a decimal point. So 25% is the same as saying 0.25, the of represents multiplication, and 150, you keep it the same. So you do 0 0.25 times 150. Now, if you have a calculator, then you could go ahead and say 0 0.25 times 150, and you can get 37.5, and that is 25%. But say you don't have a calculator, you're not allowed to use a calculator, you're on your college placement test, they're being difficult. So how do we go ahead and multiply 0 0.25 times 150? So let's go ahead and try that out. 150 times 0 0.25, and this is another skill as well. I don't like multiplying by decimals. So what I do is I count how many decimal places are in the problem. One, two, and then there's no decimal points there. So there's a total of two decimal places. After I've counted them, I can take the decimal places out of the, of the problem. So I can now write it as 150 times 25. I can multiply it as normal, and then I can put the decimal places back in at the very end once I get an answer. So let's go ahead and multiply this as normal. 0 times 5 is 0. 5 times 5 is 25. Um, carry the 2. 5 times 1 is 5. Plus 2 is 7. Cross off the 5. Carry the 0. 0 times 2 is 0, 5 times 2 is 10, carry the 1, 1 times 2 is 2, plus 1 is 3. And then you're going to add both lines, 0, 5, 7, 3. And then remember, we took out two decimal places, so we have to put them back in, 1, 2. So the answer is going to be 37.50. In this case, it's going to be money, so that is going to be the 25% discount. Okay, you guys. Message me below. Tell me whatever questions you have. I hope you guys like this impromptu lesson. I hope you guys appreciate it and I'll see you guys.